coming up on today's show. Is there an average person throw away 70 pounds of clothing, shoes, towels, and sheets and textiles every year in the trash, and all of that really could be recycled. There's a lot of people that could use uh, other stuff, and so uh, just throwing it away seems kind of like a waste. Everybody just really thinks like, oh my God, I don't know what to do with this, and I throw it away. I, I think there's a lot of organizations that have done a really good job, you know, um, bringing out to the public how easy it is. Lose the clutter and save the planet, today on Keeping You Organized. Hello and welcome to Keeping You Organized. Today we are going to go green and uh, save the planet and help you get organized all in one time. And, and with us we have a special guest, Chris Scrott Wheedleton from OrganizingManiacs.com. She's a certified professional organizer, a CPO CD for chronic disorganization. Chris, welcome. Hi, John. Welcome. Thank you for having me. D did I get all your designations right or, or is there more? <laughs> <laughs> right now, those are the only two, but okay. I am working on a coaching program, so okay. there might be more in the near future. Awesome, awesome. Well, you've got a, a fascinating story. We're going to talk about green organizing, and um, I know you're passionate about that, and uh, there's a backstory to that, so let's let our uh, audience know why are you into green organizing? Yeah, so I was born and raised in Brazil, and I moved to the States when I was around 15, but in Brazil, I grew up in Sao Paulo, which is, uh, and I grew up in a part of the city that is fairly poor. Uh, and as you know, natural resources are very scarce. So in Brazil, basically what people do is you can sell uh, plastic and newspapers and cardboard and all sorts of natural resources that people now, you know, now in the United States, we just recycle, but there you can actually sell that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so funny enough, there was a recycling center right up the street from me from, uh, from where I grew up. And I'd be fascinated to just go there and look at what they were doing and what they were recycling. And of course the piles were neatly organized. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> that appealed to my organized side. Uh, and once again, it was a way to, you know, earn a couple of, you know, a couple of extra dollars that could, you know, be school lunch money or whatever. Well, what brought you to the United States? Now, you're, you're out in the Virginia area, is that correct? Yeah, I am right outside Washington, D.C. I'm about 30, 35 minutes with no traffic. Um, is, that even is that even possible out there, no traffic? <laughs> in the, it's right around between 11 and 12. You can probably get to Washington, D.C. Okay. in about 35 minutes. All right. But that's about it. So you you moved, uh, you moved, why'd you move there? Um, my dad had a brother that lived in Connecticut and, uh, and it was a lengthy process, but they decided that they wanted to give us a, you know, a, an opportunity that we probably wouldn't have had by living in Brazil. Awesome. So we just took a chance, sold everything we had, and then just moved here with a couple of suitcases. Once again, it kind of appeals to the yeah. <laughs> to declutter and get rid of everything and move into a different country. All right. Well, then, how did you move into becoming a professional organizer, and and when did you get involved with NAPO and uh, the professional organizations? So I've been organizing uh, professionally full time for about seven years. And I used to work, my last job was a project manager for a small remodeling contractor right here, uh, not very far from where I live now. And um, in 2007, when they basically lost their business to the real estate crash, mm -hmm. um, I found myself unemployed and so searching. I wanted to do something that was meaningful. I wanted to do something that was different and I did not want to spend uh, the rest of my life in a cubicle. So uh, in the process of looking for a job, I found an organizer that had also been a project manager. And I was utterly surprised to find out that people were doing this for a living and getting paid. Mm -hmm. So that led me into NAPO, which I became a member of right away. And then it led me to ICD, the Institute for Challenging Disorganization, which uh, I also knew immediately that my clients had, um, they had issues that I wasn't going to be able to overcome with uh, pretty labels and good bins. 
All right, well, let's get into the green organizing because that's what we teased, and we want to save the planet, and we only have about 20 minutes. So uh, let's talk about uh, maybe even your first couple clients where you realized that, uh, you know, that childhood memory of recycling and, and uh, that lifestyle. Yep. Uh, how did that come to be? And give us an example of how you can use that in the regular organizing business. Yeah, so my very first, um, my very first really big client uh, she was a person that hoarded paper, of all things. Um, and I found that she was just very environmentally conscious. And so, uh, and she had no recycling system in her building. It was a small condo in, in Alexandria, Virginia. So I volunteered to take that stuff home. And, and the moment I volunteered to take that stuff home and recycle it for her, she was just thrilled and everything is just started going. And, um, I basically have a transit connect as a work van and every time I went there I would fill the entire van with paper and then take it to the recycling center because oh, I told her I was bringing it home but it became so much that I was afraid that my condo association was going to call and complain so um, but she was like as I talked about the importance of recycling and we had that in common and she just let the stuff go um, and then I thought huh that's a great strategy I always like to be green, but maybe other people would be interested in really purging their stuff if they if they knew that there was going to a good place instead of just going into the landfill. So I started doing research, and I think over the years I have figured out more and more places where I can take things to than normally, you know, you'd be like, well, what do I do with this? And, and the most natural uh, f answer would be, I'll just throw it in the trash because there's nothing I yeah, can it, do to it. But there is so much we can recycle uh, that we didn't know before. Have you come up or, or across any statistics that uh, tell how much we throw away that actually could be recycled, like maybe a certain percentage of our garbage that we're just not recycling because we either don't know or don't want to do it? Well, you know, um, I actually printed one because I, um, I wanted to give you one. There are over 8 million tons of electronics mm -hmm. that get thrown away every year. And there's one really disturbing statistics to me is there an average person throw away 70 pounds of clothing, shoes, towels, and sheets and textiles every year in the trash. And all of that really could be recycled. Wow. So when you go into and work with a client, what are like the top two or three hot areas where you know you can make an immediate impact by uh, having them either recycle or is there other options to you know reuse give away things like that i think electronics is probably the biggest one because every time i go see somebody they will have a huge pile of you know old printers and computers mm -hmm. and the endless cords that people have for every single thing they buy that comes with a new cord the chargers and the old cell phones i think that is like one of the single most um, impact that I have with every client because regardless of what the project we're working on I always take their electronics because that is one item that it's so easy to recycle but everybody just really thinks like oh my god I don't know what to do with this and I throw it away I I, I think there's a lot of organizations that have done a really good job you know um, bringing out to the public how easy it is uh, Office Depot has a great program uh, Best Buy has a huge program Goodwill has a huge program. Most, uh, I am very lucky that I live outside Washington, D.C., so we have access to a lot of ways to recycle things where, you know, a person living in a small town in the middle of the country somewhere might not have. But that's why I encourage people to just look at these, you know, these programs that are already available and just really take advantage of it. But recycling electronics is one really, really big one. You know, it's interesting. I, I think there's been kind of a surge in thrift stores and things like that. Either that or I just like going to them. But I was out at one uh, last week, and I found a, a panini maker. It was brand new. I mean, so yeah. someone either, you know, thankfully they didn't throw a brand new appliance away. But yeah. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of that, too, where um, there's a lot of people that could use uh, other stuff. And so uh, just throwing it away seems kind of like a waste. It is very true. You know, I think sometimes um, sometimes we, we think like, well, I actually always tell my clients this. 
we have all been victim of good marketing somewhere. Right? Have you ever woke up in the middle of the night and you know be flipping through the television, you see this infomercial and you think like, oh my God, I really could use this product. And then you get it and you're like, well, maybe I don't. I think the paninis are like a perfect example because yeah. at one point we all have bought one yeah. and we all have one laying around the house but you can donate it to the thrift store and somebody like you might find great use for it for a couple of times. Right. And then when you don't want to use it anymore, you can pass it on to somebody else. But uh, definitely, I'm a huge fan of giving stuff away to other people that I think would be a, a good fit to use it. Great. Well, we're going to take a quick break here. And when we come back, we're going to talk some more um, green organizing tips, ways that we can reuse, recycle, uh, get some more stories from uh, some of your clients. And uh, we'll do that in a moment with Chris Scrott Wheedleton from OrganizingManiacs.com. And we'll be right back. Looking to get your home organized but don't know where to start? The newest ebook from Smead will help you with room by room organizing tips given by the top professional organizers in the nation. Download your free copy now at smead.com forward slash room. That's smead.com forward slash R O O M. Smead, keeping you organized. We are back now on keeping you organized, uh, saving the planet in the second half of the show here. We started in the first half, but uh, we had to take the break. But we are back now uh, talking with Chris Scrott Wheedleton from OrganizingManiacs.com, uh, who specializes in green organizing. And uh, Chris, just to recap about, you know, kind of some of the things that you uh, put out in the forefront to your clients. When, when you meet somebody, and they say, well, what do you do? How do you describe kind of the, uh, the green organizing techniques that you use? So I think organizing has, you know, like a basic five-step process, but one is, you know, we help people sort, we help pe make people make decisions, then we help them organize what they want to keep. And then there's all of the leftover stuff. So that's basically what I tell people. We try to make an effort to help them dispose of everything that they don't want in an environmentally friendly way. And we recycle, um, we recycle literally a ton of stuff for people. I wish I had kept track of how much in tonnage that we get rid of for people mm -hmm. but i wasn't i wasn't really good at that but there's there's a lot that can be recycled normally when we work big projects you know it would be surprised if we end up with maybe like 20 trash bags what are some of the unique things over some of your clients that you've recycled you know we talked about paper and you know electronics but any like either unique electronic device or just unique things that were uh, either re reusable or, or able to be given away? Um, well, in my garage right now, I have the ceiling fan. It's like, it's literally the size of a suitcase and it's like this tall and it's, it was meant to be on a window. So it's like double wide and it is made out of pure metal. <laughs> I've not seen one of those ever. Uh, so I'm trying to find a good home for that fan. I think it, you know, my brother-in-law suggested it to hang from the ceiling and like rewire it so it can be used. But, um, you know, it's every, I think every item is unique. I do work with a couple of local thrift stores. So I try to take a lot of stuff to them. One of them is very trendy. So he, he they, t they tend to sell to like uh, artists and uh, creative people. So a lot of this stuff just gets reused in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, I'm married to a very creative person, so he tends to <laughs> he tends to come up with some weird ways to use stuff. Uh, he a few years ago he made a uh, I had a client that had a whole bunch of cigar boxes, and he created a guitar out of a very nice one. Oh, wow. So. I think when people think outside of the box, there's there's a lot of different ways to use some of the the stuff people are throwing away. It, I think it's an individual, uh, it's an individual choice. Sometimes I'm not very I'm not very handy or crafty myself. I like you know I like to reuse things that are purposeful. But I, I believe there's a lot of creative people in the world that uh, can definitely use some of the things that we would normally throw it away. You just have to find a place to to give them to. Well, what's your technique when you work with a client? Because uh, I'm sure there's some that just maybe don't 
want to give things away or recycle because they want to hold, you know, they're the hoarder type, you know. How do you uh, work with them, convince them, encourage them that some of the stuff they have has got to go? Yeah, that's sometimes it's a really hard process and every individual is a little bit different. Um, I try to I try to motivate them to think about the things that they really want and keep those and then let us make decisions on what can go and how it can be recycled without getting too much into detail about that because then I think people get really bogged down. Um, when people have made a commitment to themselves to be more organized, they normally have a easier time getting rid of things. If they're still in the mindset that I must keep, um, sometimes it takes a little bit of, of getting used to it. And I just really try to like, when people say things like, hmm, I don't know about this, or if they say something negative about the product, or if they say, like, I used to like this, I'm looking for keywords. Mm -hmm. And then I use that against against whatever thing that they you know they're keeping, uh, and and I, I really try to make them into a decision where it's like you just said something really negative about this product. I know you don't want it anymore. Why don't we just get rid of it? And you, and I use getting rid of it in a way that it's always recyclable. So you know if it turns out that it doesn't it doesn't get recycled, at least they feel like it went into a good place. Yeah, I would I would think that most people would. Um feel better if they knew something they were getting rid of was going to somebody or yeah. used in that kind of way rather than just, I, I can't imagine people just saying, well, I just want to throw it away unless they're in desperation, right? Funny enough though, there's a lot of people that really don't care about the environment and they really just want to throw everything away. But I, I think we have, um, I think we have gone to a time where people understand that natural resources are very limited. And at some point, we're just going to have to take the environment seriously and really recycle a lot of the stuff that we throw away. Are, are there any in, environmentally f uh, uh, friendly uh, organizing things that you like to use or recommend uh, to clients to help uh, in their organizing process? So bamboo is a, a really easy product to use, and they make just about everything out of bamboo nowadays. They make containers, they make drawer dividers, they make, you know, everything and anything that you can think of, uh, bins out of bamboo. Um, I like I like recyclable paper, so I love all of the Smead products, um, you know, hanging files, manila folders. Um, you guys have an extensive collection of products that people can choose from. Um, I always, you know, and some people like pretty, so you have to find a balance. Sometimes you can put your, you know, not so nice looking hanging files into a nice bamboo container. That way you can balance out the green. And I always really try to tell people, just try to reuse what you already have. Um, you know, it's the most green thing you can do. If you don't have to go out and buy some more, if you can just reuse what, what's already available, what's, what's already there, uh, you'll be much better off. Yeah, I know in developing some of our products, and not that we're trying to pitch any products here, but uh, we have a, a tree-free Super Tab file folders made out of the Bagash sugar cane, yeah. uh, which is kind of a neat product. And then also our, our latest line, the Erasable, uh, where you can reuse a file folder just by erasing the tab. So yeah. um, it's always so been can... something that we've been trying to uh, push forward as well. Absolutely. And you can use those over and over again, which is, you know, what, what works today may not work tomorrow. So you erase it and you just redo it again. Uh, I think sugarcane, there's, there's a lot of uh, stuff that's being made out of that. You know, it, it looks and feels like plastic, mm -hmm. but it's really not because it's really easy to biodegrade and it can compost fairly uh, easily. It won't last a uh, hundred million years. So, because <laughs> if you really think about it, I think, you know, in, in the organizing industry, we probably don't don't create as much, uh, you know, waste as probably some other industries like the restaurant industry. And I'm glad to see some of the restaurants there, they're using those containers that are made out of sugar cane and they can easily biodegrade. Do you, do you see the, uh, the digital revolution uh, helping with, uh, you know, minimizing the amount of paper or do you see as much paper now as you did before? Because, uh, you know, I, there's differing opinions on that. Oh, yeah. The, the, the elusive paper paperless world. I really don't think we're ever going to be 100% paperless. I think technology has definitely helped 
uh, it has definitely helped some people and it has definitely hindered other people. It really depends on your personality. I probably keep more electronic things than I normally would have in paper just because it doesn't really take any space per se. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't think we're ever going to be 100% paperless, no. Right. Well, we're just about out of time. I want to give you the opportunity to uh, tell our audience about your business, uh, how they can get a hold of you. Do you do uh, virtual? Or are you just kind of uh, in your local area? What kinds of services you offer and your website again so that people can uh, connect with you? Yes. Yeah, so uh, Organizing Maniacs, we basically focus on working with the chronically dis disorganized or the brain-based condition clients. So they will have ADD, ADHD, OCD, uh, and they will be really challenged by disorganization. We work with people in a couple of different ways. Uh, we do do virtual consulting all over the country. Um, most of our hands-on work is in the Washington, D.C. area, not that we wouldn't consider a project anywhere else in the country. We like sunny and warm places. <laughs> Especially in the winter, right? <laughs> Especially in the winter. Yeah. Uh, we, so the resource that you talked about earlier is, um, lose the clutter and save the planet and is basically available on our website. So anybody can have access to it. It's just a really extensive guide on how to recycle just about anything, uh, while organizing. And, uh, the easiest way to find us is just on our website, organizingmaniacs.com. We're on all social medias, Pinterest, Twitter, Facebook, um, I think that covers it. Yeah, but if you can't find you there, then you can't. Then then someone's probably living a remote world. So <laughs> then you can find us. Yes, that's right. Well, Chris, okay. thank you so much for uh, joining us today, and we hope to have you back again and talk more about green organizing. So thanks, John. I really appreciate it. All right, Chris Scott Wheedleton, uh, organizingmaniacs.com, and uh, now we have saved the planet, and we can move on to the next show on keeping you organized. Coming up next time on Keeping You Organized. And that's one of the biggest things I see my clients miss doing when they've tried to organize on their own is not labeling. 